was enjoying hearing about Dr. Diabetes. So here we are back at the final table of EPT Berlin. It's the Pokestars.net European Poker Tour. We are heads up in the main event and a huge chip advantage for Daniel Gay Padun. 24 million plays 3 million. An all German heads up battle here. So we are guaranteed to have the first ever German winner of EPT Berlin. That's pretty cool. Uh, chances are, Daniel, he's got the advantage now. He's got a great backstory, having done really well in this tournament twice before, heartbreakingly bubbling the final table two years ago. And of course, if, uh, if Robert Haig wins this final table, he's got a great story. An up and coming poker pro, poker author, poker coach. I imagine his book is gonna sell just a little bit better if he manages to win this. It's Julian Thomas who's written the book. No, it's not Julian Thomas who read, wrote the book. Still, this is the guy to win, you know, to win this on uh, in, in Germany is a great story either way for either of these two guys. Well, Robert Haig would put himself in a very strong position for to win EPT, EPT player, player of the year. year. That's right. This guy should write a book if he wins cuz it would still sell. So here we go, the first hand of heads up play. Blinds still 100, 200 with a 30 ante for at least the next eight minutes. And the first hand is raise and take it for the chip leader. And Robert Haig starts with around 11 big blinds and that's only for the next eight minutes. It's so around 50, 13 big blinds, yeah. So 13 big blinds, but yeah, he'll be down to 10 big blinds if we go to the next level. That was a queen exposed. So at this stage, we just want to make sure we do everything by the book. And that's heads up, that's declared a dead hand. And what did Daniel show there? He showed one queen. I think Daniel showed an ace there. Maybe two aces. Robert Hay on his button. He limps his button. Padoon checks. <coughs> King 10 4 flop. I think we have to guess that Haig would be raising most hands with a king in them, no? He does bet this flop and wins. So obviously worth referencing once again the huge jumps in the prize money. 531,000, more than half a million. Obviously a life-changing sum of money, but 350,000 euros separates first and second because the winner will get 880,000. And this is often a situation where we would see the final two, maybe talk about doing some kind of saver, some kind of deal. Not if you're the guy who's got a better than 10 to 1 chip lead. Yeah, that was probably a very short deal conversation. My guess is it went like this. Nine. I would just be like, yeah, bro. <laughs> I'm sorry. But you, you understand. I have, I have, a, I'm so sorry, but, but nine. 15 big blinds for Haig. Now he's raising. Bidoon calls. We're going to see our second flop of heads up play. Seven, eight, nine, two clubs. Bidoon.
Moon checks. Really easy to have a piece of this for either player. Four, five, all the way up for Jack Queen. He's got some kind of draw or pair. He's got one hand on his chips to bet, one hand on his cards to fold. <laughs> Wouldn't recommend folding when it's been checked to you. Well, Hike is going to bet. Half a mil ball. Well, whatever it is, Padoon's put them all in. And I would imagine, I mean, that's probably the way he should be playing this. Just putting constant pressure on the short stack. The short stack now playing 11 big blinds with three minutes left on the level. We're going to play straight through because obviously we took a short break while we set up for this heads up battle. So the level will roll into level 35, 122.40 with a 30 ante. <coughs> folds. We saw there, that was hand at 108 of the final table. So chances are, and I don't want to jinx things because we could see a couple of double ups and then a long drawn out heads up battle. But if things go the way we think they're going to go, it's going to be relatively short for an EPT final table, but that's only to be expected. Bearing in mind how the tournament went yesterday, a very long day, 12 hours. Which means you guys may not have a lot of time to write down that old free roll password. Good which point, is well made. Monaco, all lowercase letters. M O N A C O. And of course, Monaco is our next destination. We'll be there in a week's time for the EPT Grand Final. Live streaming of the main event starts on Monday, the 6th of May. You might want to write down that date. 10 days of live coverage on EPT Live. You love it. Haig limped. Pidun checked. Check, good check on the flop. Good luck wrapping anything on this board. Maybe now he can wrap a pair of sevens. Check, check again. The X on the river. Check. This looks an awful lot like I can't win this hand by checking. And Padoon folds. <laughs> 13 big blinds for Haig. 123 big blinds for Daniel Guy Padoon. Just to recap, Haig, who now lives in Brighton on the south coast of England, is a regular on the European Poker Tour, kicked off season nine with a win in one of the side events, an 1,100 euro buy-in No Limit Hold'em tournament, won 71,000 euros, also was a runner-up in a Eureka Poker Tour high roller at the Prague Festival in December, and won a bounty event at EPT Deauville back in February. So he is a contender for EPT Player of the Year. If he wins this, I think it's pretty much a lock. I think a second place here is even going to be a pretty decent line on the CV. And then we've got Padoon, who's not a professional player, runs a mobile phone parts company with his brother Toma, who's here in the casino, by the way. He's here at the Grand Hyatt, rather, railing his brother. And we've got, still got a decent number of spectators watching this heads-up battle with two German guys going for the title. But once a year, and there are the spectators, ironically, Daniel Guy's brother not among them at the moment, but once a year, Daniel takes a week off from the work to play EPT Berlin. He did it in 2011, where he finished ninth. He did it last year, came 17th. He's now on the verge of actually winning this thing. 
Robert limps. Pidun checks. Ace, 10, six, two hearts. Egg bets, Pidun folds. Craig Davidson asks, what sort of setup was done for heads up? Well, there are several reasons why we give the players a break. One is that if they do want the opportunity to discuss a deal, that's their chance, obviously, because of the chip stacks, that didn't happen. But also, we want to verify their stack sizes, make sure we've got correct information. Plus, it's a chance to color up as well. I mean, obviously, Padoon had huge racks in front of him, so we colored up a lot of his blue and yellow to give him more green and black chips. And a reminder of the chip denomination. The green and blacks are 100K, the yellows are 25K, the reds are 5K. The blinds are 120, 240 now. Pidun shoves all in from the button. Egg folds. So Hag with fewer than 10 big blinds now. I imagine that's going to be Pidun's strategy now when he's on the button. Is either fold or shove on his opponent. I'm not sure whether Haig is going to continue with this curious limping strategy. I saw his lips move, but apparently he didn't say all in. I mean, if Daniel's going to let him get away with limping. He does just call. Out of a short stack. Padoon says all in. So now I we'll wonder if he keeps limping. Eight big blinds for Robert Haig. A lot of people just tuning in to EPT Live. Luke says, wow, woke up, hopped on the live stream to watch the Berlin final table, and it's already heads up. Frank says, came back from work, already heads up? And a huge chip difference? Well, uh, let's enjoy it while it's still on. Daddy's going to try to keep his patience here, but I feel like the people who are surprised that it's already heads up, if it's just surprise, that's fine. But if it's like surprise and disappointment, you, sh you should have known better. You should have known that this was going to happen with how late we played last night. The stacks were just going to be too shallow today. Meanwhile, an all-in and a call in the high roller. Looks like tens against queens. Looks like he was the player at risk. And I guess he's doubling up. Because he ain't standing up. Looks like Padoon shoved the flop this time after Haig bet. So Haig now down to seven big blinds.
I, re I really don't think Daniel should be folding many of his buttons. That's, that's enough, I think, to put. He did about enough to put Haig all in. Haig folds. There's one last big blind. Haig down to 1.4 million. Six big blinds. So you're saying there's a chance. A lot of people on Twitter criticizing the strategy of Robert Haig. Rather confused to see him limping out of a 10 big blind stack and then folding. He ain't limping now. Pidoon calls. This could be it. This could be the tournament. Haig shoved with ace four. King ate the hand for Padoon, so Haig gets it in good, but he's not that far ahead. Padoon has two live cards, and if he hits a king or an eight, it's over, and he has won the title. Doesn't really change that much. Padun's king and eight still live. It's a three. And the last card, the river. Eight set to double up. Two pair on the river, so he does double up, but he is still short stacked. He's doubled up to 12 big blinds. Actually, not even. Bang on 12. Difference in prize money. The better part of 350,000 euros. Plus, of course, the EPT title and trophy. Zach says, I can't believe you're not having a go on the short stack. Lol. I don't really have a go in general, but, uh, you know, this guy's playing for a ton of money. And this is a stage of the tournament. This is very difficult to have any experience at this stage of the tournament. How often are you going to be here? By the way... Justin pointing out on the emails that if Robert Haig finishes second in the main event, he'll have 2,440 points in the EPT Player of the Year race, whereas Jan Bendit currently has 2,645. So he does need the win to there's still, But there's still one more stop. That's true. Pidoon puts them all in. Haig folds. Pokestar's blog guys have actually just updated an article on this. I agree, Zach, that he's playing really funny, but if he's going to get to see cheap flops, why not? I think the key thing is a lot of people were saying that Jan Bendik was pretty much a, a lock for player of the year before this tournament. And this would put Haig within touching distance of that title. Haig shoves. Pidoon can't have anything that great. Maybe King High again doesn't want to give a courtesy double up a second time. Let's it go. really pretty incredible here we've got the EPT reg short stack not the favorite here and we've got the everyman the guy who takes a vacation every year to play poker 
going to walk out of here maybe with almost a million euros. If I were his brother Tomai, I would not expect him to show up to work on time on Monday. Daniel folds his button. Those must be some pretty, pretty bad cards to fold your button. Pretty, pretty bad. So 12 big blinds for Haig. I don't speak German, but I think I know what this one means. Haig, 12 BB, Pidun 102. David's Comp Mod Goliath. <laughs> Egg shoves. The dune folds. <laughs> and the crowd goes wild ish. Bjorn rode in a little while ago to say impressive rail. Just heard a one-armed man clapping. Not bad, Bjorn. Leslie says, want to thank you for an awesome week of action from EPT Live. Keep up the great work. Thank you very much, Leslie. For those of you asking about when EPT Live returns, not long to wait. The Monaco Festival kicks off on the 6th of May. That's a Monday. And we'll be there for 10 days of it. That's right, 10 consecutive days of live coverage from the European Poker Tour. Padoon shoves and Colt. That is a big ace. Ace King against 8-9. Eight, 8-9 nine. Eight, nine is not that far behind. 8-9 super live. So let's see the flop. 60-40 thereabouts. And there is a pair of eights for Daniel Gay Padoon. Jumps way out in front. And now Robert Haig is going to need to catch an ace or a king. Or oh, this tournament is over and we have a champion. It's a three on the turn. The same outs needed for Haig. An ace or a king. And the river card. It's a jack, so he has done it. Daniel Guy Pudin goes deep in EPT Berlin for the third year in a row, and this time he wins it. The runner-up is Robert Haig, originally from Germany, now lives in Brighton in the UK. He collects 531,000 euros. But Daniel Guy Pudin, congratulated by his brother Toma, wins the title, wins the trophy, and first prize of 880,000. A pretty quick final table, but only to be expected after the marathon session we saw yesterday. They play nine-handed for so long. It took several levels for the final table bubble to burst. It meant that it was a relatively shallow stack final table. No one was super deep. The chip leader, Robert Haig, at the start of the day, had fewer than 50 big blinds. He eventually finished as runner-up. Five Germans came into the final. The Russian player, Roman Koronev, was the first man out. He collected 77,000. Then we lost Julian Thomas, the German sit-and-go specialist, currently working on that book, Advanced Concepts in S&G Play, due to be published next year. Roman Herald went out in sixth, followed by Alexander Helbig. Pascal Voss, so many Dutch viewers hoping that the Netherlands could have back-to-back -back victories on the tour. He went in fourth for 255,000. Lasse Frost, the Dane, was third. Then we went heads up. Not that many hands of heads up play. 122 hands in total at the final table. Haig, the runner up. Daniel Guy Padoon, the winner. Rarely plays tournaments, but when he does, he has results. And he thrives here in Berlin. Bubbled the final table in 2011. Last year, finished 17th cashing for 20,000 euros and then in 2013 went all the way and a sealed victory for 880 grand 
So let's hear from the champion of EPT9 Berlin. Daniel Gaperdun is down on the floor with Joe Stapleton. Daniel, uh, first of all, congratulations. Thank you very much. Uh, how many times have you played this event? Um, you mean the EPT or in the EPT Berlin? In general. Uh, four times. Four times, and you've done here in Berlin three times. Three times, yeah. And what were your finishes previously? Uh, 2011, I became ninth, final table bubble, and last year I became 17. So, how scared were you to go out in ninth place again last night? Well, to be honest, uh, there was one hand. Um, I, I don't remember exactly who raised, but uh, there came a raise, and I was pretty short, and I became queens. And this is my fear hand because uh, that's how I become final table bubble. So I decided only to call, and uh, the flop came in, and uh, the door card was a queen. I made a good pot with it, and um, I, I won a good pot. And of course, it uh, went through my head uh, not to lose again with queens, and that's why I didn't shove them. So you've played this tournament three times, and you've done ridiculously well every time, including winning it this year. What, what is up with you and playing EPT Berlin? I don't know. It seems to be my city. <laughs> And uh, one last question is, how proud are you? You are the first German to ever win EPT Berlin. I even didn't know this. I didn't know this, but uh, I'm very happy, really. It's right. a dream. A dream come true. All right, everybody, let's get a big round of applause for Daniel here, EPT Berlin Season 9 champion. Thank you. Thank you. He is indeed, and very shortly we'll be going back to the floor for the winner's presentation. The trophy will be handed over to Daniel Gaperdin, and often those of you watching EPT Live will know that there is a deal done, either three-handed or heads up. Of course, that did not happen because there was such disparity in the chip stacks when they went heads up. So Daniel Perdun gets all 880,000 euros. Obviously still a great cash for Robert Haig, who is a contender in the EPT Player of the Year race. He now has 2,440 points. Jan Bendik has 2,645 points, and there's plenty of poker to be played. Nearly 50 events in Monaco, a huge festival that is going to conclude Season 9 of the PokerStars.net European Poker Tour. And just to remind you, we will be there. So make a note of the date, Monday the 6th of May. That's when Day 1A of the main event starts. Joe and I are going to be in town, and we're going to be streaming for 10 consecutive days. You're going to get main event coverage. You're going to get super high roller coverage. You'll get some side event action as well. We'll have viewer votes and everything. Plus, because we'll have the TV crew there, you'll get whole cards from the final tables of both the main event and the super high roller. It's going to be awesome, and we look forward to joining you for those 10 days next month. Fine, fresh, fierce. We've got it on lock for Monte Carlo. Well, this has been an awesome tournament, and I hope you've enjoyed following it all the way. I want to send a huge thanks to our production team. They've done awesome work over the last few days. Thank you to everyone who entered our competitions, who tweeted, who emailed. Please keep the feedback coming in. Nuts at Pokestars.tv. Tell us what you like. Tell us what you don't like. Tell us what you want to see more of. We can still mix things up ahead of Monaco. And, of course, we've got big plans for Season 10. The schedule for Season 10 will be announced during the grand final and we're talking about that with all of our friends from Team PokerStars Pro. Huge thanks to the guys from the blog, Rick Dacey, Howard Swain, Stephen Bartley. We appreciate your support guys. Well done to the live updates guys as well, keeping everyone abreast of what was going on on the outer tables in the main event and keeping them abreast of the high roller. It's time for us to throw down to the floor to tournament director Thomas Lamash from Joe Stapleton and me James Hartigan though, it is goodbye from Berlin. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the winner ceremony and the trophy presentation of the EPD Berlin season number nine. Joining me here on the stage, the poker manager of the Spielbahn Berlin, Olcha Kaczak, and our EPD president, Edgar Stuchli. And I present the most important person for today. He is the first German winner of EPD Berlin, and he will take away 880,000 euro from this event. Welcome, give a very nice hand for Daniel Bidon from Germany. And now, Edgar Stuckli, President, will pass the trophy over to Daniel. Yeah, finally, we have our new champion, and for EPT, it's time to say goodbye to the beautiful city of.
Berlin. On behalf of the whole team, I want to say a big, big thank you to the players, the staff and media, our sponsors, Paysafe Card, Shambhala Jewels and Slide, and our partner, Spielbank Berlin. I hope you enjoyed your time as much as we did, and I'm looking forward to welcoming you to the final stop of the European Poker Tour in Season 9 in a couple of days in Monaco. Thanks again, have a good evening and a good night.